you may be seated, please. Thank you, Pastor Frank. Pastor Frank makes us feel very at home. He's so personable. He seems like he's my own brother. But I was so privileged to meet Dr. Iverson. I've heard his ministry for such a long time, enjoyed his writings, and when I met him personally this morning, I was excited. The man of God, giant of faith, and we are proud of such a person while we live on this earth. And this morning, I'm feeling so honored and privileged to stand on this pulpit to share some of the revelation that God has bestowed unto my life. This morning, I'm going to speak about the task prayer. Usually, I have two different type of prayers in my life. First one is fellowship or worship prayer. Every day, two to three hours, I enjoy this worship or uh, fellowship prayer with God. But when I want to get some job done, then I should shift it to the task prayer. Through this only fellowship prayer, I can't accomplish this great goal if I have a goal to accomplish. If I want to advance God's kingdom, then I should turn to the task prayer. To have a task prayer, you need preparation because this whole world lies under the sway of the evil one. So you are stepping into that uh, land of evil one and the devil will resist you. Many people say, well, Jesus Christ has disarmed the devil. So why should he be afraid of devil? Yes, Jesus Christ surely has disarmed the devil on the cross, but he has not destroyed the devil yet. So still the devil is like a roaring lion going around trying to rob you, kill you, and destroy you. So whenever you step into his land, then the devil will fight back with the determination. And so to have a task prayer, you must always know that you are now going into the battleground. You look at the Israelite. God already gave the land of Canaan to Israelite. But every inch they had to fight to occupy, really. Because already the land belonged to them. But still, they should fight to occupy every inch of the land. And like that, when you read Bible from Genesis and Revelation, God has given us tremendous promises. Tremendous, wonderful promises. Those are already potentially ours, but still to possess those promises. And that I call task prayer. You must have determination to get your prayer goal accomplished. And if you don't prepare your heart to go into this battle, surely you will have the fiasco. Many people have a terrible experience of failure in their prayer life. They say, we prayed and prayed and prayed, nothing happened. We have had only fiasco because they did not prepare in their heart before they go into the battle. So, to carry out task prayer, you must prepare in many ways. Number one, you must have the renewed mind before you go into the battle. With all the mind occupied with fear and despondency, you can never go into the war. You must have a renewed mind. New understanding. Before you enter into the battle, you should know clearly that you are entering the battle with a sure success and victory. You must know that. You must have that boldness and that peace and that courage before you enter the battle. When you enter into the battle with a foggy mind, uncertain about victory, then all of your prayer would result in fiasco. 
13 years ago, great necessity occurred in Korean Protestant church to start daily newspaper. We were forced to start our Christian daily newspaper to protect Protestant church from the heretics and from government. But they all felt the need, but nobody volunteered to start a daily newspaper. Because when I consulted with a specialist, the consultant said that to start a newspaper, at the seed money, I should have one billion dollars. And to make it success in five years, every month, I should pay three million dollars. And that task was so enormous and so great. When I listened to the advice of the consultant, I felt dizzy. So I said, oh God, this is not my job. I can handle it. My mind was foggy, full of fear, in disarray. So I couldn't go into battle in this situation. I sh should pray for the one billion dollars as a seed money. Then I should pray that God will supply three million dollars every month for five years. I should go into the, the prayer, the battleground. But my heart was full of fear and disarray and foggy. So I was waiting upon the Lord and I was praying because all the pastors in Korea and Christians expect me to do that work because we have the largest congregation. So they said, Joe, you must do that. But they were pressuring me. I was under tremendous stress, but still my heart was not ready. So I was waiting up in the Lord. Day after day, praying. But still my mind was full of the cloud, fog. And I couldn't see anything clear. But one day after the early morning prayer meeting, suddenly the wind of the Holy Spirit blew. And all the fog and the cloud disappeared. And I could see everything as clear as blue sky, that it was God's will for me to start this newspaper. Regardless of the one billion dollars and three million billion dollars for every month, those numbers mean nothing to me. I could only see God. And I had great peace and assurance, and I had strong, courageous mind. So I went into the battle with a renewed mind, with new understanding. And all through these 13 years, I've fought through. We have built a wonderful Christian daily newspaper, and we are influencing government, business world, and society and whole nation. So, you know, it is very important to be renewed in your mind according to the will of God and to go into the battle with new understanding. One of our members was dying from a brain tumor and doctor told us that there was would be only 5% of chance for her to survive. But anyway, she would die, so doctors said that they would try to operate on her brain, but there would be only chance of surviving 5%. And she was in terrible situation. All the family members were depressed and they were crying. And I went and prayed for her for a long time. She has been hearing my message about divine healing, but uh, her mind was not renewed. And in desperation, she began to pray to the Lord. Then suddenly, the Holy Spirit came, and the Holy Spirit renewed her mind. And she had new understanding about divine healing. She said, by his stripes, I was healed. She said, I've been healed since 2,000 years ago then why should I suffer from brain tumor? And she said, this is the illegal parking of the Satan. <laughs> she had new understanding. So she said to her daughter, 
I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer 10,000 times. Every time I finish my prayer, you count. So she began to pray the Lord's Prayer for 10,000 times. She was blind and deaf because of tumor. And it took six hours for her to finish the Lord's Prayer for 10,000 times. But when she prayed 9,099 times, nothing happened. But when she finished 10,000 times, suddenly the Holy Spirit, like a fireball, fell upon her. Tingling all through her body, she jumped out of bed. Suddenly her eyes were opened. She could see everything and she could hear everything. And she was praising the Lord. And doctors and nurses rushed into the world room. They took her out and took all the tests. There was no vestige of the tumor left at all. She's still alive. Because before she went into the battleground, she had a new understanding about the will of God. So, brothers and sisters, many people are wasting time praying and praying and begging with a foggy mind under tremendous fear. So, they end in fiasco in their prayer time. So, before you enter into the prayer battle, you must have your mind renewed according to the Word of God. And you must have new understanding about the will of the Lord, clear understanding. That is very necessary. Many people are wasting time. They fast and pray. Many people, our members fast and pray for 40 days. And I say, why do you fast and pray? No, I don't know. And so many people fast and pray, so I just follow them. I say, you are wasting your time. You must have new understanding the purpose of fasting and praying then you will have victory. But if you pray at random without knowing the purpose, then you would waste the time. Brothers and sisters, this is the reason God has given the Bible and Holy Spirit to renew your mind and to give you new understanding. So whenever you have problem, before you pray, ask God to renew your mind so that God will give you new understanding about your position, about that problem. Then when you enter into the battleground, the devil would swarm to you and put fear into your heart and many confusion. But since you have new understanding, you will not be confused. You know what you are doing and you will have tremendous courage and boldness and you will be strong in your heart to go through the battle. And the number two, when you go into the prayer warfare, you must have an unshaky faith. Many people have great misunderstanding about faith. They think the faith is something great feeling in their heart. They say that uh, they should feel fire going up and down through their backbone to feel faith. But faith is not feeling. Faith is your choice. Whether you feel it or not, you choose the faith. When you see the ruler of the synagogue, Mr. Jairus, his daughter was dying, about 12 years old, and he came and begged Jesus Christ to come and lay hand upon her daughter so that she could be healed. So on the way of going home, the servant came out and deported to ruler that her, his daughter was dead already. You don't need to bring Jesus to home because she's already dead. And the fear struck him and his knee were buckling and he was trembling and he was crying out. He was desperate. Then Jesus came near to him. And Jesus spoke to, into his ears, do not be afraid, only believe. And there Jesus was asking him, not choose the fear, choose the faith. Faith is choosing because this Jairus, she was not in the mood of having tremendous feeling in his heart. Because he was not in the situation of having 
that kind of emotion. He was in desperation because he heard the information that his daughter had died. And he was crying hard. He was depressed. He is in depth of the sorrow that he was in, not in mood of elation. But Jesus came and said, choose faith. Don't choose the fear. Do not be afraid. Only believe. So at that juncture, Jairus, instead of choosing the fear and doubt and unbelief, he chose faith. He went together with Jesus, and Jesus performed a miracle, and she came back alive. So faith is choosing. It is not your emotional odyssey. Many people try to feel the faith, but faith is not something to feel. Faith is something to choose. I have a very wonderful experience with one of my Christian she had a car accident and uh, uh, her leg was broken. The doctor operated on her and uh, she lost about seven centimeters of the bone and the doctor put the iron bar in the leg. But still, she, her leg was uh, seven centimeters short and she was terribly limping and she was walking heavily leaning up on the crutch. And she came to a personal consultation. She said, I have this accident and I lost my bones and uh, my leg is seven centimeters shorter and still I have the steel bar inside of my leg. Is it the will of God for me to be healed? She said, I'm foggy about this situation. Her mind was not renewed and she was having not new understanding. So I said, regardless of your situation, I'm talking from the Bible. I'm not talking from my own heart of compassion. I'm talking from the Bible. Bible says, by his stripes ye were healed. So, devil came and caused accident to you and made you lose the bone. But I said, I don't say anything about those kind of things. I only say from the point of the Bible teaching, it is the will of God for you to be healed. And she renewed her mind. She had new understanding about her situation. And so she said, lay your hand upon me and pray for me. So I laid my hand upon her and prayed for her and rebuked the, 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 the crippling situation. And I asked the bone to grow. And she said, I believe. And she chose to believe. Many people laughed at her. And even her children, when she would go back home and told them that she was going to be healed, they laughed at her. She said, Mother, don't do that. You will become a laughing stock. He says, this, bone, this iron steel can turn into the bone. She says, don't trust your pastor. Don't believe. She says, no, I believe. God is omnipotent. He can do anything. She says, I choose faith. And year after year, she was believing. And the death continued for 12 long years. You think of that. And people all come to her and say, give up your faith, because you believed for 12 years and nothing happened. Why do you keep on believing? But she said, I choose faith. And one day after the morning service, God suddenly came, gave me the gift of the word of knowledge. And I said, someone who is watching this service through a television program is going to be healed from the short leg. You know, we have satellite church. We have about 20 satellite church. Our church is on uh, United Island, and Seoul is so big, and we have... 12, about 20 satellite churches. Each satellite church has five to 10,000 members. So she was uh, attending one of the satellite churches and she was watching this program through satellite television. And when I announced that she stood up and uh, among the audience she said, I am healed, that's me, that's me. 
She said, I've been believing for 12 years, and that's me, and all people were watching at her. But when she was going out of church, she was terribly limping, like going out. And people all laughed and said, where's your healing? What's happened to you? But she said, this is just a symptom. I don't believe in symptom. This is lying vanity. This is lying vanity. Truth is truth. And by his stripes, I am healed. And today, God announced through the mouth of my pastor that I got healed. So he went, she went back home and told that she was healed to her family. And all the family laughed and they said, no, you are still limping terribly. I think you would have better give up today. But she kept on saying that I was healed on that particular Sunday. And a week passed and nothing happened. And ninth day passed on the day of ninth. She was standing before the mirror. And suddenly she saw herself straight, not, you know, twisted, straight. So she walked around, and she found out that she was completely healed. <laughs> and the miracle is that the family took her to a hospital, and doctors took x-ray picture. There was no iron bar, but just a bone. <laughs> you can't explain. You can't explain. God is able. And the truth is that she is going around witnessing and leading the cell meeting nowadays. She is no more limping because she chose the faith for more than 12 years long. And finally, she went into the terrible battleground in spiritual warfare for nine days, but she never gave up the faith. She had strong faith and God said, it shall be done unto you according to your faith. You must always go through the spiritual battle, spiritual warfare. Even though you have fulfilled all the God's condition, still you must go through the spiritual warfare and, and conquer the devil in spiritual realm. Then you will have the manifestation of the fruit in the physical realm. So, you must have an unshaky faith. Number three, when you go into the battleground, you must have a strong visions and dream. What is visions and dream? Visions and dreams are seeing the end result of your prayer. Before you receive it, you already see the end result of your prayer. When I started my first pioneer work in 1958, I went to the slum area of the Seoul city. People were all poor and they are living from hand to mouth. And uh, I put the old torn American marine tent, because American marine used and that sold it to the marketplace and I purchased. And I put the tent up and I uh, threw a few sheets of the rice uh, mattress. And first I had five members and one of the members was my wife. <laughs> Later I fell in love with her and I married her. And with five members I started in such a poverty stricken way and one of my uh, seminary professor came to see my pioneer work. He grimaced his faith and he said, Cho, you are doing a great mistake. In this poor area, you can't start church. You will never have success. Why don't you give up and come to my church and become a Sunday school teacher? But I said, Professor, I have dream. Even though I have this poor tent church, but in my heart, I see 3,000 people thronging to my church. He shook his head and said, you are really a crazy dreamer. <laughs> but things are happening by crazy dreamer. I was seeing the end result of the, my prayer. I was praying to God, oh God, give me 3,000 people in my church. And I saw the end result of my prayer in my 
had vision. And the Bible says God calls those things which be not as if they were. So I acted as if I already had 3,000 members. And I was preaching to the 3,000 members every Sunday. And this five person would put the finger into the ears. This pastor, don't shout, you will have only five person. <laughs> you are hurting our ears. But I said, you don't understand me. I'm not speaking to the five person, I'm speaking to the 3,000. And one day my fiance came to me and said, don't talk like that. People are telling story behind you that you are crazy. <laughs> but I said, of course they don't understand because visions and dreams are in me, not in them. I have the vision, not they have the vision. So I have already 3,000 people in my church, in my vision. My church is not tent. It's a wonderful cement brick building and people are thronging to church, first floor and second balcony. I see them. I see them. And even my fiance shook her head. At that time she was young and inexperienced. So she didn't know anything. But oh, brothers and sisters, I was pregnant with my visions and dreams. You know, it takes time for women to give birth to a child after having been pregnant. So when you are pregnant with visions and dreams, it takes time. So I was living with the visions and dreams, eating with that visions and dreams, sleeping on that visions and dreams. And you are not making the visions. Visions are going to make you. You must think of this very deeply. When you have visions and dreams, that visions and dreams become the means of the Holy Spirit and the visions and dreams are going to lead you, guide you, make you. So I always say to the young people, show me your vision, I'll show you a future. Because when you have clear-cut vision, then the vision is going to rise up and lead you through many miracles and accomplish the goal. So I just simply had a vision, but I, I was penniless, I was very poor. And I didn't know where to get money to purchase land and build such a church. But I had only a vision. And to have such a vision, you don't need education, nor any high position of society. Any person could have a vision by the Holy Spirit. When you look around the world, many great things are done by Pentecostal ministers and Christians because the Bible says in the last day God is going to pour his spirit upon all the flesh and the young men shall see vision and the old men shall dream dreams. When I was young I was seeing vision but now I'm old and I'm dreaming. <laughs> when I went to Australia I spoke at Brother Pringle's church and he has a marvelous congregation. I was amazed at the part of vision he had for the world. His satellite church is all over America. Australia, Great Britain, Europe, Asia. One of his disciples building a church seat with 10,000 people in Singapore. It's amazing. It's all out of his own visions and dreams. So I kept on having the visions dream. It was 1958 and 1964. I was speaking to the 3,000 people in downtown of Seoul City. And at that time, the Presbyterian Church had the largest church in Korea, and that Presbyterian Church has 6,000 members. So I went down to the Presbyterian Church, and I asked a janitor to open the door of the main auditorium. I went with my measurement, and I measured from front to the end and counted all the chairs, and the janitor said, what are you doing? So I'm going to build a church it's right bigger than this Presbyterian church. <laughs> that guy looked at me. He said, you are crazy. The pastor Han, who studied church, is a great man of God. But you are still very young. How dare you try to compare yourself with him? 
But I said, I'm not comparing myself with him. I'm only trying to dream a bigger church than your church. <laughs> so I received a definite vision and dream in my heart. And I dreamed. And in 19, it was uh, 70, I already had 12,000 members. Twice as big as the Presbyterian Church. <laughs> Visions and dreams. Then I knelt down and prayed, and the Holy Spirit says, Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. So I said, Open my mouth wide. <laughs> then God said, No, not that mouth. <laughs> it's a vision and dream. If you widen your vision and dream, I will fool it. So I said, Father, 30,000 members. That's my vision. And I went out to Dirido Island and built the church we sit with 10,000 people. And soon, I had 30,000. And as soon as I enlarged my vision's dream, the vision's dream by the Holy Spirit performed a miracle. Then 100,000 members, 300,000 members, half a million. Now we have 700,000 members. I have a wonderful friend by the name of the Alex Ibriam in Australia, uh, no, no, in Indonesia, Surabaya. You know, he's a fantastic guy. He built a church we sit with 20,000 people. Last year, I went there to dedicate his church. And you know, when I stood on the platform, I felt as if I was uh, standing in the stadium, covered. When that, the place was covered by the dome, it seemed limit, endless. Wow. What a church he built. But before he built that church, he came to my church, and uh, I tried to put some vision and dream into his heart. He was uh, in a terrible situation because he had his first son, but his son was born paraplegia, all twisted. So it is an Islam country. And all the Islamic people come to him and says, Where is your God? If you are a Christian pastor, then why do you have paraplegia. Your son is paraplegia. And he says, your you God is dead God. And uh, your God cannot do anything. So he preached and nobody would come. And he was in desperation. So he came to South Korea. He consulted with me. What can I do? I said, you should heal your son. This only answer. But he said, the born paraplegia, he, uh, he had a brain damage while he was being born. So doctor told me that there would be no way for him to receive healing. I said, yes, doctor has no way, but God has the way. <laughs> then he said, what can I do? I said, you don't go to your office. Every morning, go to your son's room. Stay there till sunset. And in your heart, see the end result of your prayer. What is your end result of your prayer? It's complete healing. Okay, see yourself, you see your son completely healed in your heart, completely healed. And pray that, and persist in your prayer. Seeing that vision, prayer without vision is a wasting of time. You are in battleground. Now devil, Islamic devil is trying to keep your son in paraplegia so that the Christianity could not advance in your country. So you are in terrible battleground, and you must see the end result of your prayer, the vision, very clear and persist and fight on. When you conquer devil in the spiritual realm, then you will see the result in the physical realm. So keep on doing that. So he left. One month passed, telephone came. It's true. I've been doing as you tell me for one month. Every morning I go into room and pray for my son, seeing he completely healed. One whole month passed and nothing happened. What can I do? I was in great fear. I said, my God, why should I carry this pressure in my heart? But I said, since you already have prayed for 
one whole month. Why don't you do another month? <laughs> so he said, yes, I'll do it. So I was joining my vision and dream together with him, and I was praying another month together with him. And two months passed, and telephone call came, and he said, now I have no strength. Nothing happened. Still, my son is in a condition of paraplegia, and everything seems so dark. And uh, he said, I don't think God can heal. Oh, no. I said, you've already prayed for two months. Uh, you can't go back. <laughs> you should go keep on praying one more month. And I will join my vision and dream together with you. So it came to the end of the third month, and he was absolutely tired. He was despondent because no, nothing in appearance happened. Then the third month passed, and at the first day of the fourth month, he, with a great amount of faith, he saw the visions. He closed his eyes and entered his son's room, and he was praying, and he said, Oh, God, I see my son completely healed, whole, healthy. Then suddenly his son said, Daddy, Daddy, he opened his eyes. The son was set on the set up on the bed, completely healed. <laughs> completely healed. The Islamic world was shaken up. All of those Islamic people in Surabaya, they were shaken up from the foundation of their faith. By the thousand, they turned to Jesus Christ to sing this prayer. And my associate, Mr. Shikagi, and Brother Paul Kim, we went together to Surabaya. And their son went, uh, went to the uh, military academy, and he became military officer. And after having served the military, he retired and went to the Bible college and become minister. Now he's associate pastor to his father, isn't he? Healthy strong, and he married, and he has children. <laughs> Don't ever say that, oh, vision is in those hazy things, oh, that they are onto anything. No. Visions and dreams are the language of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit speaks in work through your vision and dream. When you enter into the battleground with a clear vision and dream, the, the Satan tremble. Satan tremble. And this case of the Mr. Alex Ibrahim really helped me and encouraged me in my life personally. I myself almost doubted. But God performed such a miracle. So having the vision and dream is a very important factor for you to have a victory in spiritual warfare. Whatsoever happened in spiritual realm, that would happen in your physical realm. Don't forget this truth. Many people try to solve problem in physical realm before they solve the spiritual problem. But always spiritual battle precede the physical battle. When you overcome the devil in spiritual realm, then tremendous deliverance occur in your physical realm. That is the reason you need to hear prayer. Prayer is a battle. You go into the spiritual warfare and you really tackle the problem with the devil because the devil is there to stop you so that you will not enjoy the abundant life of God. The devil comes to rob, kill, and destroy you, but Christ came to give you life and life more than abundantly. Abundantly. So in the realm of thinking, in the realm of faith, in the realm of vision dream, you are waging the war against the principality and the power evil one. And in many appearances, it seems that you will not make any advance, but 
you should know the devil is trembling when you go into battleground armed with new understanding and unshaky faith and with visions and dreams, you are fully armed. Devil will be shaking. And to the last moments, devil act as if devil were not afraid, but no, it is not true. Suddenly, the kingdom of devil will be demolished. Imagine you are releasing all of those power, power of new understanding, power of the faith, power of the vision dream. Finally, those powers are going to be released through your mouth speaking. Life and death are depending upon your tongue. You are binding by your tongue and you are releasing by your tongue. And when you ever speak negatively, then you are canceling all of your past prayer. Language is a powerful spiritual means. Language is powerful. Many people do not understand that. I tell you, your language is a seed for your future. Understanding, power of the faith, power of the vision dream. Finally, those powers are going to be released through your mouth speaking. Life and death are depending upon your tongue. You are binding by your tongue and you are releasing by your tongue. And when you ever speak negatively, then you are canceling all of your past prayer. Language is a powerful spiritual means. Language is powerful. Many people do not understand that. I tell you, your language is a seed for your future. You are seeding through your speech. So naturally, when you criticize others and you, when you hate others and you speak their language, you are seeding the seed to gather that kind of fruit in your life. Language is very important. So Bible says we are singing new songs and we speak new language. That's redeem the language, the language of the Word of God. Actually, you are in dense spiritual warfare in your speech. Devil is trying to confuse you so that you may speak for devil. Devil is trying to manipulate you so that you may speak hatred, destruction, poverty, sickness, failure, unhappiness. Devil is trying to make you to speak that. Then that the language bring that kind of circumstances. You know that the silkworm is exuding the thread, silky thread to make the cocoon. And after making cocoon, the silkworm would crawl into the cocoon and live there to become butterfly. Your language is like a silk thread which is coming out of you and you are making your own cocoon, your own circumstances. Many people say, I'm always sick, because you, you make your cocoon a sick cocoon. <laughs> Many people say, I'm poor, I'm failing my business, because you are thinking of it, you are talking about it, and you are making the cocoon of the poverty. Yeah, it's true. I have brought uh, several business people here. Would you please stand up? Would you? Yeah, would you? They are part of our business party. We have 50,000 businessmen, and they are all millionaire, and some of them are multi-millionaire. But most of them come as a pauper to my church. But I've taught them, I've helped them, and now they are what they are. So I know how to make millionaire. Because throughout my ministry, God has shown me the principle. And so, actually, you are making your circumstances by your mouth speaking. What you speak, you are making cocoon. Inside of that cocoon, you are going to live.
and your family. So speaking is very, very important. I will tell you one of my experience. One of our sister was dying from uh, cancer of esophagus, and she could hardly talk. <sighs> and uh, I prayed for her so many times, and she was going to hospital and doctor tried to treat him, but treat her, and but her sickness became very bad. Finally, she could hardly speak. And uh, when she would come to me, she would always talk negatively. I pray for her, tell her the word of God, but she would never have renewed mind. She would never have new understanding. She was confused. And she would say, Pastor, I'm dying. I'm suffering every moment. Even though you pray, you are praying, not avail. Devil is more powerful than your prayer. I'm suffering, I'm dying. So don't speak negatively. But she says, I don't speak negatively. I'm speaking the truth. So finally, I was so discouraged. I was ready to give up. And so I was praying. I said, Father, this is my last time I'm praying for her. I don't care whether she live or die. <laughs> <laughs> then the, thought, the Holy Spirit gave me a new understanding. Suddenly, new understanding came in my heart to help her. So I said, okay, you bring me a pencils and notebooks. So she brought pencils and notebooks. And on top, I wrote down the First Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were healed. So you go to the prayer mountain, crawl into the prayer cave, fast and pray and write down this scripture for 10,000 times. <laughs> this is your homework. Every time you write down, you should read aloud. Read aloud. I force her to make a right kind of confession. <laughs> read aloud and write down for 10,000 times. And when you finish your homework and bring this notebook to me, I will really pray the prayer of faith for you and you will be healed. <laughs> so she went up to the prayer mountain carrying this notebook. And fasting in the cave, she wrote down that scripture for 10,000 times. It took more than 10 days. And she, every time she wrote down, she says, by his stripes I was healed, by his stripes I was healed, by his stripes. And finally, she was completely brainwashed by herself. <laughs> there was no vestige of negative thinking left. Only the healing truth inundated her mind and every fiber of her being. And when she finished the homework, she was so excited and she rushed back to my office with a clear voice, Pastor, I have fulfilled your homework. Here's my homework. I says, where is your husky voice? She says, oh, it's gone. <laughs> and we rushed her to the hospital and doctor could not find any cancer of esophagus left at all. She was healed. Mouth confession is a powerful means of the Holy Spirit to conquer the devil. You are entering to the battleground with a great sword of the mouth confession. Language control your life of present and future. What you speak, you are going to have it. Don't underestimate your mouth confession if you ever would like to become a millionaire. I say always to my business people, do never talk in the terms of the poverty, failure. Right. Don't look at your circumstances. Circumstances can be changed. It's, a, it's, a, it's a all lying vanity. If you respect lying vanity, you cannot have victory. But see the truth. Speak the truth. 
The heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall never pass away. And the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs up on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon Gentiles. As this is truth. Whether the economic situation of the nation, the world changes, the worldly people depend upon that, but you are no more worldly people. God has translated you from the power of darkness to the kingdom of his son. We have different nationality, different personality, different identification. So we are living in different level of the life. Jesus himself said, man shall not live by the bread alone, but by the word of God. And so they always confess the victory, abundance, and the blessing of God. And they build their cocoon of victory through their mouth speaking. It's a very important. You look at Abraham. When he was called by God, his age was 75 years old. And from that time, until he became 85 years old, he prayed to God to have a son, but failed. Abraham, he prayed for 10 years for the son. God did not answer. Why? He was in the battleground, but he failed because he was not armed properly. He did not prepare his heart to receive the answer from the Lord. So when he was 85 years old, God decided to teach him how to pray the fruitful prayer. Because Abraham, for more than 10 years, he was failing in the spiritual warfare, so they will start the answer to come to his life. You see that even Daniel, he prayed for 21 days till he received the answer. So one evening, God called Abraham out while he was quite asleep. He said, Abraham, come out of your tent. See, come on, rubbing his eyes. He said, look up the sky. He looked up the sky. Count the numbers of stars. So he began to count the number of stars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. And finally, he could count no more because he was swimming in the stars. And God said, okay, your children would be as numerous as those stars. Tears rolled up. And when he looked up the stars, and the stars seemed to be smiling at him, calling, Father Abraham. He was greatly moved. And there, he began to have a new, renewed mind, New understanding. New understanding. Oh, God has already planned to give me so many children. New understanding. Then Bible says he believed. Despite of his old age and age of his wife, he believed after seeing the stars. So new understanding, believing, and every day he was looking to the sky and he was keeping up the visions. Yes, I have so many children. And they would come and say, oh, you are very old. Your wife is 75 years old. You can't have children. No way. Look at my children up in the sky. I have so many. He was living in that vision. Then finally, God said, I will teach you one more lesson. Change your name from Abraham to the Abraham, father of many nation, and Sarai to Sarah, the hostess. Father, people would laugh at us. We don't even have a puppy in our home. <laughs> then how could they call each other father of many nations and hostess? And God said, you must call those things which we not as if they were, if you ever want to get your answer, prayer answer. From that time on, they were calling each other Abraham and Sarai. Suppose evening come and the sailor was calling her husband far down their valley. Abraham, the supper is ready. The voice reverberated throughout town, and people said, look, listen, Abraham, father of my nation. Oh, poor Sarai, she wanted to have a child so much. She called her husband as father of many nation. As you know, they don't even have a puppy. <laughs> she lost her mind. Then here soon they hear the very tone sound. Oh, Sarah, I'm coming. Sarah, the mother of many children, the hostess, he is in the same boat. <laughs> but they were confessing each other as if they were the children of the 
fathers and mother. Then, when Abraham was 100 years old, the Sarah was 90, he was almost like a dead body. <laughs> but God answered prayer. The devil was conquered. Miracle occurred in the spiritual realm that appeared as a fruit in the physical realm, and they were rejuvenated, and they got the son Isaac. They learned the lesson. Before they learned the lesson, even the chosen men of God failed in prayer for 10 long years. They prayed every day, 10 for long years, for a son to inherit his asset. But God didn't answer. But finally, God taught him this full lesson. New understanding, unshaky faith, visions and dream, mouth confession. When he learned the lesson, Despite of all of his old age, God performed the miracle and God gave son. God bless you. God will bless you all according to your faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.